It's impossible to predict the time when confidence will be lost, but it can come quickly. Resorting to buying other paper currencies will not be of much help. When the dollar crashes, most likely the purchasing power of all currencies, since all currencies hold dollars as a reserve, will go down as well. This means that dollars and other currencies will go into buying consumer items, precious metals, and other physical properties. Consumer prices will soar as well as interest rates. The central bank will lose control, and the more they inflate, the worse the confidence becomes. The interest rates will respond to these efforts by rising sharply. If the Fed tries to reverse the run on the dollar, interest rates will also soar, and the pain on the American citizens will be of such proportion that political chaos will result. Either scenario leads to political and social chaos, the third event, and the most dangerous. With no ability of the federal government to fund its commitments, international or domestic, major changes will occur in our system. The social unrest will elicit cries for government to exert unusual force to head off a complete breakdown of law and order. The ultimate trap will be set for a system of government claiming to protect a free society. If more power and police authority are not given to the federal government, it will be argued that only anarchy will result. If more government policing power is given, it will mean a lethal threat to civil liberties. Already, we have permitted the notion that a single person, the attorney general or the president, can decide who is an enemy combatant, thus denying that individual the right of habeas corpus, permitting indefinite detentions without charges made. This attitude towards civil liberties has changed significantly since the fear built around 9-11. Yes, I know, declaring one an enemy combatant is reserved only for the radical Muslims engaged in terrorism against the United States. To be reassured by this reasoning is quite dangerous and naive. Logic should not lead us to equate suspects with terrorists and include American citizens. And yet, this has already been set by precedent. Under difficult circumstances, our political leaders will not be hesitant to use these powers to maintain order. Tragically, the people may even demand it. We are rapidly moving toward a dangerous time in our history. Society as we know it is vulnerable to political and social unrest. This impending crisis comes as a consequence of our flawed foreign and domestic economic policies, a silly notion about money, ignorance about central banking, and ignoring the onerous power and mischief of out-of-control intelligence agencies our unsustainable welfare state and a willingness to sacrifice privacy and civil liberties in an attempt to achieve safety and security from an inept government. Dangerous times indeed. What can be done about it? Must we wait for the inevitable and expect to restore our liberties in a street fight against the overwhelming power of the state? Not a good option. The only way that we, we can prevent blood from running in the streets is to offer a better idea of the proper role of government in a society that desires first and foremost liberty. And that is impossible without a firm commitment by our thought leaders to the ideas of freedom, the source of all creative energy and prosperity. An all-powerful state is the threat to that ideal. The prevailing attitude of the people, as it once was in early America, must be that of liberty and self-reliance, rather than the nanny state and dependency. Rely on, on the government force to mold all private choices. If this is understood, a smooth, although not painless, transition to a free society is achievable. Ignoring this option will be very destructive to everything that is dear to the hearts of most Americans. What is it that we must do? We must immediately embark on Balance the budget by reducing spending. Change our foreign policy so to that of non-intervention. A full audit and more supervision of the Federal Reserve, leading to abolishing the Federal Reserve. Legalize competition to the Federal Reserve with competing currencies. Regain respect for civil liberties and privacy while reigning in the CIA. Wean ourselves off the dependence of wealth transfers by government. Abolish crony capitalism, no subsidies, no bailouts, no regulatory or tax privileges to protect the powerful elite, especially the military-industrial complex. Eliminate the income tax, the inheritance tax, and taxes on savings and dividends. None of this can happen without the restoration of Congress to its dominant position of the three branches of government, as was originally intended by the Constitution. 
The executive and the judicial must be reined in, and Congress must assert its prerogatives over all legislation curtailing all unconstitutional agenda through budgetary controls. Signs abound that angry Americans are now more ready than ever before for a change in direction that is indeed real. If this program were improvised, even suddenly and dramatically, the adjustment, though significant and to a degree somewhat painful, would be much shorter and of minor consequence compared to the chaos and poverty that will result if we refuse to change our gluttonous appetite for a free lunch.